in the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you all? I hope you all are doing well and you all are happy and taking care of one another and your family members at your home. And you are enjoying your precious time at your home right now. Dear students, I welcome you in Pakistan International School Types Virtual Learning System for the session 2020. I welcome all of the students of grade 10th in biology class. I'm Ms. Shazia. And I'd like to congratulate all of the students to be promoted from grade 9 to grade 10th with high grades. Dear students, I pray from Allah that he will shower, may he will shower all of his blessings upon you and your family. Dear students, as you are in grade 10th now, so we are going to study biology. And I hope you all are having your books with you. We are going to start biology from chapter number 10 because that is the sequel of the previous book which you have studied in grade 9. So this will start from chapter number 10 and that is gaseous exchange. So we will start from the topic gaseous exchange in plants. So let's get started. This is your chapter number 10, gaseous exchange. Dear students, as you have learned in the previous class ninth about respiration and gaseous exchange also. So let's, we will relate this a uh, topic uh, from the uh, with the previous uh, topic of respiration from grade ninth. We'll not touch respiration here, but we will just uh, see physiology and anatomy of the respiratory system. Dear students, so first, just take a look on the introduction that. Sometimes just we are confused between two words that respiration and what is breathing. Actually breathing and respiration are two different processes. First we'll see about gas exchange. Actually gaseous exchange is a physical process by which gases move passively by diffusion across the surface. From any surface, it can be a cell of living organism or it can be any non-living thing from which by a barrier, uh, the gases can be exchanged on both of the sides by the help of diffusion. You have uh, just studied diffusion before in grade nine. So in living things, when we talk about gaseous exchange, it is the process that is called breathing. So what is breathing? Breathing is simply the process of moving air in and out of the lungs to facilitate gas exchange with the internal environment, mostly by bringing in oxygen and bringing out carbon dioxide. Yes, this is a common like fact 
that we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out a carbon dioxide. So this process is called breathing. That is not the process of respiration. Respiration is different process. If we just see that is also called not respiration, but that is also called cellular respiration because respiration occurs in the cells. As we have seen uh, in the ninth class that you have seen photosynthesis and respiration, isn't it? So respiration is the set of metabolic reactions and activities. Uh, processes which takes place in the cells of organism's body by which what happened by which the food is converted into energy or we gain energy by the food which we eat and but in the presence of oxygen Breathing is very much important for cellular respiration because oxygen is utilized for this process. So breathing is physical process, but respiration is biochemical process in which with the help of enzymes, glucose is broken down into an um, carbon dioxide and water and we get energy uh, as a result of this process but what is needed for the breakdown of the glucose that is oxygen so that energy is in the form of we know very well in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate and some waste products are released. So those waste products are carbon dioxide and water. So we exhale, every living organism exhale carbon dioxide and water vapors uh, as, a, uh, as a result of this process. So overall, don't be confused between these two words these two terms respiration respiration is actually involves mechanical as well as biochemical processes but breathing is only mechanical and physical process of gaseous exchange okay so Gases exchange, first of all, we will see in the plants. In the plants, gases exchange is so simple because it does not, the plants don't have any type of, any type of organs or systems for the exchange of gases with the environment. Isn't it? Like it does not have the lungs like that, although they are called the lungs of the environment, but they are not having the proper systems of exchanging of the gases. But we know that plants also do respire. They, res uh, they respire just to take in uh, their um, uh, gases and to take out or remove the gases. But that is not called breathing, that will call a gaseous exchange in plants. So as we know that they don't have proper organs and systems for exchanging of the gases, so every cell of the plant body exchanges the gases with the environment by its own. So whatever the parts they are having, they are having their own system of exchanging of gases. So gas, uh, so gases are exchanged in the plants almost throughout the body, not from the specific parts. Like roots are having, uh, uh, like sorry, stems are having different processes. Leaves are having different, roots are having different processes for exchanging of the gases. But all the, they all are um, having the same process for exchanging of gases that is diffusion. So diffusion means 
the movement of material are here, the movement of gases from higher concentration to lower concentration. So the so gases move towards the uh, towards that part or towards inside or outside where they are having the less concentration from the higher to lower concentration of the gases. So let's talk about some of the steps by which the plants can uh, exchange their uh, gases or they are having the exchange, uh, gaseous exchange by different processes. So they are having uh, stomata for exchange of gases. Some plants can exchange the gases by cuticle, some by lenticels, some by general body and some by dissolving uh, carbon dioxide or oxygen in the water. Yes, we will take a look one by one about those steps, but right now, if we see that leaf of leaf cells face two types of situations. Because why they uh, face two types of situations because leaves are green and green uh, color is uh, given by the chlorophyll and chloroplast which are present in the leaves. So due to that, in the daytime, they are having the different systems and in nighttime, they are having different systems. In daytime, plants uh, they play major role for the production of food that is photosynthesis. They get uh, just a re uh, revise that topic which you have studied in detail in grade nine that photosynthesis means yes, plants absorb sunlight by the green pigment, chlorophyll, which are present in the chloroplast. And by that, they absorb carbon dioxide and sunlight and water from the roots. And what they do, they do photosynthesis in the daytime. But do they respire in the daytime? Yes, they also respire in the daytime because they are all uh, living organisms and they need oxygen for breakdown their food and to get energy for growth and for different purposes. So in the daytime, what happened? Plants do respire and they do photosynthesis as well. And both of the processes just, uh, are, uh, just go side by side. So what happened in the daytime, because stomata are open, so they take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen in photosynthesis. But in respiration, this process is opposite as we know. So they, the oxygen which they release or they uh, removed from uh, the cells during photosynthesis, that oxygen is again utilized by the cells to do respiration. So they uh, form a glucose and they break the glucose at the same time as their energy requirement. So they release carbon dioxide when, when they respire in the daytime and also what they do they use the same carbon dioxide. They use the same carbon dioxide by the cells to do photosynthesis. So this is actually the cycle which is going on in the daytime again and again, again and again. The oxygen released in photosynthesis that is again utilized in respiration and the, as a result, 
carbon dioxide is removed in respiration and that carbon dioxide again used for a, a photosynthesis so it means the like uh, the same amount of oxygen is utilized again and again and carbon dioxide also is utilized again and again but what happened in the night time let's see okay in the night time what happened plants do photosynthesis yes no they don't do photosynthesis because there is no sunlight so they need sunlight to do photosynthesis now in the night no sunlight so they don't do photosynthesis so just they do respiration so what is needed for respiration they have to exchange carbon uh, oxygen sorry oxygen they take in oxygen from the leaves the cuticle there are certain other processes the stomata are closed but not all the stomata are closed some are open but if um, lots of stomata are closed so they can do uh, by cuticle by lenticels there are other processes also we will discuss after some time so they take in oxygen for their respiration and what is the result of respiration yes production of carbon dioxide so they release lots of amount of carbon dioxide now this carbon dioxide is not utilized by those plants at the time because they don't do photosynthesis in which they can use carbon dioxide so this is also very dangerous to just sleep under the trees in the night time because they release only what carbon dioxide which are dangerous for human beings and other living organisms also so here we can see in photo a photosynthesis is done only in daytime so they release carbon dioxide uh, sorry oxygen they take in carbon dioxide but in the night time res uh, uh, respiration is going on in the night as well as in the daytime so um, for respiration they need oxygen for all the time because respiration is a continuous process so in the night time they get oxygen from the environment like we get oxygen from the environment and they release carbon dioxide after uh, as a result of respiration process okay so let's talk about some of the steps by which the uh, plants exchange the gases in their body first of all we will see very very important that is by stomata there are lots of stomata we know that they are present in the leaves and sometimes in the young stems they are also present like the when the uh, plants are growing they are little so they are present in epidermis in epidermis in upper epidermis we know that there is cuticle present so plants are having very very less stomata in the upper epidermis but in the lower epidermis mm, there are lots of stomata present in um, in the up, uh, lower epidermis of the leaves so if we see this stomata so what happened mostly stomata are open at the daytime so there are the spaces among uh, the mesophyll cells of the leaf if you just remember the structure or internal structure of the leaf which you have studied in grade 9 so you recall that in your mind so then you can just uh, understand that there are spaces among the, the mesophyll cells if you see this one this upper layer 
that is palisade mesophyll cells and this one in which there are lots of spaces present so that is called spongy mesophyll cells so actually they are responsible for photosynthesis and they are having lots of spaces in in them that's why they are called spongy and they uh, due to this, uh, these spaces which are present in that, they are very, very helpful for exchanging of gases very easily. So as we know that during daytime, carbon dioxide gets inside because due to that uh, photosynthesis, uh, carbon dioxide concentration gets lower and lower in the, these spaces and from these spaces carbon dioxide moves into these cells so here the concentration gets lower so uh, outside of uh, the leaf like in the environment there is high concentration of carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide particles move from higher concentration to lower concentration inside the leaf through stomata. So likewise, when there is more photosynthesis in the daytime, so what happened, there are, uh, as a byproduct, uh, these cells uh, just, they produce or they form a water, water wrappers, or uh, so what happened inside there will be high water content so uh, this stomata just releases that high concentration of water vapors from the higher level into the lower water vapor content which is outside the environment so likewise, because they do also respiration side by side, so this also happens in the daytime, but photosynthesis is quick or more faster process um, due to the sunlight. So the plants get more carbon dioxide as compared to oxygen um, through the stomata into the leaves. So if we see this yes, diagram, the stomata uh, close in the nighttime and they also open, as you have seen before, they also open in the daytime. Uh, just, um, just a while, please. Yes, now you can see here that carbon dioxide and water vapors are coming out due to photosynthesis uh, in the daytime and in nighttime they are closed. And the same thing is happened um, for a respiration process also, like we are talking about exchange of gases in the plant. So exchange of gases are done, carbon dioxide and oxygens are getting inside and outside as well as the water vapors. The next point is cuticle. As we have seen before, that in young stems and leaves, some gases exchange also occur through the cuticle because cuticle is not wax, so waxy at the time. So that is very thin cuticle on the surface of the leaf on upper epidermis. So uh, what happened through this uh, cuticle, there are stomata present also inside. This uh, very less stomata present in upper epidermis, but because uh, 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 due to uh, the presence of cuticle. So because in young plants and leaves, the cuticle is not so strong and thick. So the plants can also, the leaves uh, can also exchange the gases through this cuticle. Okay, let's talk about the next one that is lenticels. Actually, this is a new term for you, lenticels, isn't it? The lenticels are pores in the bark of the stems, not only the stems, but they are also present in woody stems and mature roots. Because they cannot respire through cuticle, 
so and uh, um, not respire through general surface because they are having very hard covering on side it that is called bark so due to the presence of bark they cannot respire through um, a cuticle as well as a stomata or uh, like when the uh, plants uh, just uh, transformed into the trees as stomata cannot work properly in stems so in mature roots and stems what happened there are other openings which are called lenticels you can see these pores these are actually more raised and more bigger than uh, stomata more raised as well because stomata we cannot see uh, without microscope but lenticels you can see here there are dotted 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 structures are there we can see through uh, uh, with naked eye and you can see it's a uh, um, uh, can see microscopic structure as well the loosely bounded cells just gathered at one place which give lots of space here just to uh, easily uh, um, gaseous exchange this is the example of tea mangrove which are present in the mangroves uh, or coastal areas which are uh, like their roots are raised and their trunks like or the bark they are having uh, lots of um, this we can see uh, the lenticels in the uh, stems just to respire properly or to just take in uh, uh, take in gases or remove the gases okay we will see now that uh, gaseous exchange in plants but which plants aquatic plants definitely they use they use the oxygen which is dissolved in the water that is called do dissolved oxygen so the uh, the release carbon dioxide in the water so the plants which are uh, present like um, uh, under the water in the ponds in the oceans rivers lakes like that so they get oxygen dissolved in water and they release carbon dioxide in the water and that carbon dioxide is again used by these plants for photosynthesis and they get the dissolved oxygen which is uh, dissolved by releasing the oxygen uh, in photosynthesis process by these aquatic plants as well as uh, the dissolved oxygen uh, it can be dissolved like through lots of uh, processes like uh, through the air that can also be dissolved through the water like water comes from down uh, from the mountain so that it collects like a, um, it dissolves lots of oxygen in it so there are lots of ways of dissolved oxygen which can be uh, used by the plants uh, or uh, uh, other living organisms which are present under the water so plants can also uh, just to use this dissolved oxygen for its respiration for its exchanging of gases yes dear students so in this chapter uh, uh, chap a gaseous exchange we have seen uh, some of the topics regarding gaseous exchange in plants so in that we have seen that during uh, day and night time how the plants exchange the gases as well as there are 
certain processes by which the plants exchange their uh, gases because they don't have proper um, uh, systems or proper organs for respiration like they are having stomata lenticels and they are having uh, a cuticle also through the uh, through which the plants can exchange their gases in the next lecture inshallah we will start gases exchange in humans so dear student just take care of yourself and your family and just remember me in your prayer also inshallah we will just meet in the next lecture till then wish you good luck